Welcome along to our third and final video in this series where we are creating a shopping list app. Um, in the first couple of videos, we've got this main menu up and running and we've got the first three items um, added. Oh, and that last one actually added with a bit of functionality. What we're going to do in this final video is get four, five and six working where we check to see if an item's in the shopping list. We see how many items are on the shopping list and we can actually clear the shopping list. Okay, so let's get started on that now. You will need your code up from previous videos. And we're going to start with number four. The one that says check if an item is on the shopping list. So we need to just do a search through the shopping list to see if there's a particular item on there or not. So in this LF selection equals four section, instead of writing pass, we're going to delete the word pass. And we're going to come up with a function name. I'm going to call it check item and put a bracket bracket at the end there. Okay, so when the user presses number four, we run a function or a block of code called check item. Now we haven't created that yet, so let's go down the bottom of the page and create that function. Now we need to write in DEF to start with to define that function, and it's going to be called check item. We'll put a colon at the end of that line. Remember, don't forget that colon or you'll have some issues. All right, so underneath check item, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be asking the user what item they would like to check for on the shopping list. So let's do an input in brackets and quotation marks. We'll say what item would you like to check on the shopping list? Colon, space, quotation marks and a bracket to finish that line off. Now when the user types in an item such as apples and presses enter, we want the computer to remember their response, so we need to store it in a variable. So let's call it item and set it to equals to whatever the user types in. All right, on the next line, we're going to conduct an if statement. It's going to read if item in shopping list. And that shopping list has an underscore. Oops, I spelled item wrong there, but what that is saying is if the item from the line above, so when the user typed in whatever it is they wanted to check, if that item is in the shopping list. Remember our shopping list is way back up here. So if our item is one of these options, okay, we put a colon and tell the computer what to do. We're going to print a statement that says, yes, that item is on the shopping list. Then we're going to go down and on the next line, just backspace so you're level with the if statement here and write the word else. Put a colon. This is basically saying um, what else is going to happen if the item is not on the shopping list. Okay, so you write else and put a colon. And then on the next line, we're going to do another print statement and say, no, that item is not on the shopping list. All right. Save it. Let's test it. That's all we should need for that one. So that's number four. So when we press number four as our selection, we run the code check item, that little block of code called check item. And that's down here. There's check item. So it runs these four lines of code and it checks to see if an item is in the shopping list. Oops, let's have a look. So if we type in number four and press enter, it says, what item would you like to check on the shopping list? Let's write bananas. We know that it's on there, so it should tell us that it's on there. And it says, yes, that item is on the shopping list. Awesome. Okay, let's try one that's not on there. So I'll just, um, I didn't have to restart that code, but I'll do it anyway. Let's type in number four again. We've made our selection. And it says, what item would you like to check? Let's try bread. And you can see that it says, no, that item is not on the shopping list. Okay, if you want to get a little bit more fancy and just provide a bit more specific feedback to the user, one thing I'd recommend doing, where it says, yes, that item, let's remove that item. And instead, after the word yes, close your quotation marks and write plus item. And then after that, do another plus sign and reopen your quotation marks. Okay, and that will say, yes, Whatever item they typed in, such as bread, 
is on the shopping list. I'm just going to copy and paste that onto the line below as well. So no, um, something is not on the shopping list. I'll show you what happens now when I run that. So if I search bread again, so I'll press number four and search bread. It says no, bread is not on the shopping list. So it actually gives you a little bit more specific feedback rather than saying that item. It actually gives the user specific feedback. Okay, so that looks good. Number four is all coded up now. Well, let's go back up and have a look at number five, which is how many items are on the shopping list. So we want to count how many items are on our list. So where we've got this L if selection equals five, instead of writing pass here, let's put in a function called list length bracket bracket. We're going to find out the length of our shopping list. Okay, so let's go down the bottom of our code here and define a function called list length with a colon at the end. And we are simply going to print out a statement for this one that says, there are, close your quotation marks, put a comma, and remember the keyword to find the length of a list is L-E-N. And then in brackets, we just give it the name of the list we want to count the items on. So it's called shopping list. So what it's going to do, it's going to go up to this shopping list here and find out how many individual items are on that list. That's all that code there does. Okay, so our print statement will say there are... And then we'll put a comma and say items on the shopping list. So there are however many items on the shopping list. Easy. Let's save it and run it. So we know there's four items on the shopping list at the moment. So let's press number five and we'll see what it comes up with. It says and there are four items on the shopping list. Let's add an item to the shopping list. So down here, we'll press number two and add bread to the shopping list. Okay, so it says here, bread has been added to the shopping list. So let's count our shopping list again now and see if it's gone up. So number five is our selection we need to type in to count our shopping list. It says there are five items on the shopping list. So it has counted that extra item now. Okay, so that means number five is coded up, working out how many items are on the list. So that leaves us with one more, number six, which is clearing the shopping list. So just removing everything off it so we can start fresh. Easy. So where this LF says selection equals six, delete the word pass. And the function we are going to call this time is named clear list. Remember, it's all one word. It's got a capital L and it's got two brackets at the end. All right, so let's create this function called clear list at the bottom. So to find a function called clear list, put a colon at the end. And all we're going to do here is we're going to write in shopping underscore list dot clear bracket bracket. And that wipes our shopping list clean. Now the user won't know that it's actually wiped clean when you type that in. Oh, when you run that function. So let's put in a print statement after it and say the shopping list is now empty. So get me formatting right, there we go. So let's save it and run it and we'll see what happens when we press number six. So we know there's four items on the shopping list. If we view our shopping list, there it all is there. Let's make the selection now to clear the shopping list, which is number six. It says the shopping list is now empty. All right, let's check it and see if it actually is. So we'll press number one to view the shopping list. You can see there is nothing on the shopping list. It's just empty. Okay, so we'll click OK on that. And that is our app created. Okay, you'll see this last function here is main menu. It must be down the bottom. Okay, otherwise your app won't work properly. But that's it. So what I will do now is go through and start adding some comments. Okay, just to explain what's going on in your code. So up the top here, let's put a comment up here. It says, create the main menu. Um, and that just runs the main menu. That's pretty straightforward. Um, we'll put a comment here. It says, 
ask the user to make a selection. We don't really need to comment that section. Um, here's our shopping list, so we might as well put something in here. So, uh, add a few items to the shopping list. Alright, so now we can just quickly put in a um, comment for each of these functions. So the first one displays all items on the shopping list. Our second function here adds an item to the shopping list. Third one, which is the removing item, self-explanatory, but we write it in plain, simple English. Oops. Remove an item from the shopping list. Coming down further, we've got check items, so we'll just say check to see if a particular item is on the shopping list. Down to the next one, we've got the list length, so that will tell us how many items are on the shopping list. And the last little function we made was the clear list, so what the... Well, actually, we'll just say remove everything from the shopping list. And the last one here just says run the function main menu which will run our app. Okay, this is without this function here, our app wouldn't run. So this function needs to be called the main menu one, which is back up the top here, to run our app. Okay, so I think we've got enough comments actually. I might put one in here above the if statements. So this one um, I guess can say oops, determine which action to perform based on the user's selection. There we go. That is our app created. So it'd be worth saving it and testing it and making sure each feature works. So if we press one, we can view what's on the shopping list. Okay, that's all good. If we press two, we can add an item to the shopping list. So let's add bread. If we add three, we can remove an item from the shopping list. So let's remove apples. Um, number four is checking to see if an item's on the shopping list. So let's check apples and it will say no, apples is not on the shopping list. Number five, how many items are on the shopping list? It tells us there are four items on the list. Number six is clearing the shopping list, so it's empty. As you can see there, it says the shopping list is now empty. Number seven will just stop our app from running and that's what those three little pointy brackets mean. Okay, so everything's working. Now there is definitely a lot more you could add to this app. Okay, you could do a lot more error checking. So if the user types in the wrong thing, then you want to tell them um, what they've done wrong and how they can fix it. Okay, there's a few stages throughout this um, code that won't work exactly. Okay, but I'm not going to show you them right now. I'm happy with how it is. And if you think you're smart enough to go and do a bit of error checking and whatnot, by all means, go for it. But for now, that is our shopping list app done and dusted.